Dear colleagues and friends, my name is Christophe Bonnell. I'm senior expert at the CNES Launcher Directorate. I would like today to present the results of a working group that we led on dealing with the human spaceflight from Guyana Space Center, the European Space Port. Uh, I'll tell you about my 21 co authors just in the following chart. The context of the study was uh, very classical with all the classical questions what are the motivations why now what is general frame uh, what do we know about it in europe and so on and so on what are the wrong costs and for this we convened a dedicated informal working group during the year 2020 involving partners with a strong background in the topic and so we had plenty of meetings to discuss all these points leading to a skeleton for a discussion at the european level Please note that obviously this is not a formal program proposal. These are just rough ideas potentially useful as a basis for future discussions. The first motivation is linked to a major paradigm shift in space operations which is taking place. There are new actors in addition to traditional ones, institutional or private, with a clear desire to occupy space for exploitation, exploration, security, and so the human spaceflight plays a fundamental role in these developments. We see LEO as a future hub for space operations, whatever they are, servicing, departure for moon, mining missions, space solar stations, and so on and so on. In addition, the announced end of ISS is associated to plenty of new multi-use orbital stations, including for space tourism. So this LEO hub requires uh, frequent access to and from, uh, and uh, both in cargo and inhabited missions. And so Europe shall be present there, both in an autonomous way and in a cooperative way. Europe shall acquire its autonomy in human spaceflight, otherwise Europe will be marginalized as a 21st century space power. <clears throat> the current guaranteed access to space of European astronauts thanks to all the international agreements could evolve in the future, depending on the negotiation, depending on the emergence of private flights and how it evolves. Okay. So for this long-term vision for Europe, we, we want to be a major partner in the Pacific expansion of humanity in the 21st century, we want to play at the same level as international partners and consolidate a seat uh, in the International Cooperation Board. So this is highly questionable without an autonomous uh, human spaceflight as uh, Russia, US, China, India. So, so the inclusion of the European ambition in the totality of the big picture, undergoing expl exploration, orbital operations, future missions, LEO and moon access is a prerequisite for a worthy contribution from Europe. So the access to this LEO hub both cargo and human, appears to be the minimal step to continue playing a role at the international level. A fundamental motivation is linked to the perception by European grand public and government. We see a very strong and positive reaction of uh, grand publics or taxpayers to the flights of uh, European astronauts and frankly an unexpected uh, general positive reaction to the missions of European astronauts, including at the government level, and currently ongoing with Thomas Pesquet, we can see it every day, and it's exactly the same situation in uh, Germany, Italy, UK, Denmark, and so on. We believe that the current storytelling is too weak, both at the political and public level. Well, questions such as uh, what, what is the use and uh, money could be used in a better way. And it's insufficiently explained in Europe compared to US or Japan, for instance. It's fundamental to explain that uh, Thomas Pesquet, for instance, a key scientist uh, doing his job with a tremendous program in the ISS currently. And so this could lead to a strong support if dream is associated. So the proposed initiative, if reasonable, and we'll see about the planning and cost, could meet with a very strong support at political level, reinstating the rank of Europe, and at general public level, uh, 
platform for all the technology development, innovation startups, STEM, new work, new jobs in very varied domains and for a long time, and with a vision, a perspective, such as was the case for Airbus, Ariane, TGV, and Bust. So this is the right moment for Europe to signify its strategic ambition, autonomy, sovereignty. Europe must be part of a global horizon for its industries and for international relations. So we, we looked at the multilateral approach. Could it be a good solution? So we see the European contribution to the adventure of humanity, so encourages the diversity of partners in cooperation, both institutional and private. And so we, we studied plenty of models and uh, and so we see that uh, strong cooperation, human spaceflight, uh, was analyzed within the framework of the working group. First, we believe there could be an interesting possibility of a co-development of the capsule system with India. For instance, a capsule, post gagarin designed jointly and launchable, both by RN6 and by GSLV Mark III. On the US side, we showed that potential interest around a joint program based on the Dream Chaser vehicle, but several issues have to be clarified to enable such uh, cooperation. On the Russian side, frankly, we did not see any credible scenario based on the current Soyuz capsule or on the uh, uh, coming uh, Oriol, uh, technically with level playing between partners. And last, we, we mentioned, of course, China, but to be very frank, China is so advanced already that uh, it would be difficult to cooperate with them now in the development. Uh, we have, nevertheless, we have a very good experience in Europe on these domains. We had plenty of studies in the past, of course, the famous Hermes stopped in 1992, but also the X-38 CRV together with NASA, which had stopped and formed unilaterally by US, the CTV, the ARV, an in-depth study of the adaptation of RN5 to the launch of Orion as a backup. We had an in-depth study of the launch of Dream Chaser and RN6. So the key technologies are all available and generally demonstrated already in Europe. For instance, the inhabitable modules uh, look at uh, Columbus first, and more than 50% of the inhabitable volume of ISS, Cygnus, Axiom, Lunar Gateway, they come from TAS, Thales Alenia Space in Torino, Italy. We master very well the hot thermal protections, which were developed um, since Hermes in the Arin Group in Bordeaux, well before, and they were demonstrated on the ISV, for instance. We master the orbital autonomy and rendezvous, demonstrated five, five times with the ATV, including the fifth flight, which was in total autonomy, thanks to a tool called LIRIS. We did the first automated docking on ISS. Uh, the support uh, module comes, can come from ATV. The European service module is European for Orion. We master very well the solid propulsion for the launch abort system. The only thing that we have not yet demonstrated in Europe is the spacesuit, but uh, frankly speaking, we don't think this is a big deal because the, the first need would just be limited to the IVA, intravehicular activity, which is quite simple. We performed plenty of technical trade-offs. I'll skip this page very quickly because it's all the key questions. Should it be a capsule, a lifting body, wing body? What kind of architecture? How do we recover it? How do we land it? What are the subsystems and so on? And we finally selected a technical choice, very simple and robust, a selection of a capsule system with modules, separation into modules and the associated recovery. So it's a crew module, service module and propulsion module, or maybe the two last one can be merged together. Two versions, cargo first, in order to gain some uh, uh, opera operations and uh, reliability, then inhabited in a second time. Uh, similar in the principle to the ARV advanced re reentry vehicle studied in depth 10 years ago that you see on the right of this chart. The service module and propulsion modules are directly derived from ATV and ESM. Uh, we return ground in French uh, Guyana as a, as a space rider and, uh, under a parafoil, as was uh, demonstrated with X-38 CRV flight tested uh, 20 years ago, uh, which leads to precise and short landing. 
uh, we see also a lifting body as face hider could be a good backup until the door is still open for this. We design it with a low duration flotation capacity in case of a board, but then the astronaut recovery principles were developed for Hermes uh, 30 years ago. The launch abort system is new, but it's based on very well-known solid propulsion. It would be a classical puller design, as in Soyuz, Gagan, Ayan, Shenzhou, or Ayan. Controllable in order to land the capsule in the ad hoc zone after an abort on launch pad. And, uh, but this has been uh, detailed, uh, looked in detail on Ariane 5 study in 2009, which showed absolutely no real criticality. So the reference is Ariane 6, of course, our new workhorse. Uh, the geometrical interfaces, the precise geometrical interfaces have to be studied. But then the parallel uh, between 9.6 and the past studies and 9.5 shows that it is more than credible because we did plenty of studies in the past as the, you see in the right of the drawing. Uh, we believe that it's probably safer than the 9.5. The 9.6, the tanks are separated. The SRBs are shorter, monolithic leading to less impact in case of, a, of an explosion. And most of the safety aspects uh, were identified in the past studies. So we had dedicated safety studies and uh, some potentially critical points require modifications are reduced in RN6. But we, we had dedicated studies on the propulsive systems in Vulcan 2. We identified that there would be a valve which would need to be duplicated and things like this. So we, we went into quite some details. Okay. But the, there are still some plenty of specificities in RN6 to address. The principle is that the reliability of the human version is gained through a large number of cumulated flights in the automatic version, as is done on Falcon 9, for instance, and the safety is addressed through the dimensioning of the launch abort system, and exactly as is done also in the Falcon 9 or the Ryan. And so the preliminary trajectories show no infeasibility. I'll basically skip this chart due to uh, time constraints, but it shows that the trajectory is uh, typically the same as the ATV with very acceptable acceleration. And even when we look at the aborts, it gives uh, acceptable acceleration levels and a very good performance. Now, if we look at the ground aspects in the French Guiana, here you have a general map uh, over the Guiana Space Center. We would have the capsule integration preparation in the building uh, called EPCU S5, which is a payload integration building, which was uh, uh, built for the ATV, uh, very close to the manned flight area. And from this, it would be rolled all the way up to the RN6 launch zone on top left. You also see the landing zone, which is currently under development for the space rider vehicle. Basically, we would use all the existing means in the Guiana Space Center, nothing real new. Capsule and service modules would be prepared and integrated in the EPS, EPC US 5 in parallel to the uh, launcher campaign, then transported at the foot of RN6, installed on top of the launcher with the existing crane of the mobile gantry. The access to capsule and modules is the doable thanks to the existing platform, so we can even add a mobile one, it's uh, quite easy. And then the implementation of the launch abort system, this is done at the latest time for safety reasons, but once again done with the crane of the mobile gantry. And uh, that's a, maybe a gantry platform, one of them must be adapted to allow access of, to the interfaces between the last and the capsule. The launch final chronology, so what we do first is we partially retract the gantry, allowing the start of the filling of the launcher with the propellant, and we install the uh, access gateway between the boil gantry and the capsule. So we fill the launcher, the astronauts arrive on ELA-4, and we use the gantry lift to reach the platform and install the astronauts in the capsule during the using the access gateway. Then when the crew is in place and ready for liftoff, we remove the, uh, the access gateway and finally retract it on the, on the mobile gantry. The gateway is uh, folded along the front face of the gantry. 
And uh, after all persons have been evacuated from the launch area, the synchronized sequence can begin until launch or takeoff. Please note that as soon as the gantry is partially retracted, the launch abort system can be used. In case of a problem, in case of a downgraded case, then in case of emergency evacuation, the astronauts can use a rapid means of evacuation of a roller coaster type. Uh, thanks to this, the astronauts can reach uh, a fallback room located below the uh, launch zone uh, for Massif. And so this room will be protected and adapted accordingly. And so they will safely wait for the arrival of uh, help to evacuate the zone. The question of uh, where do we go is fundamental. And so what we propose is to have a universal vehicle capable of visiting any existing or future infrastructure in LEO. So it would have a docking port based on the European Docking Bursting System, IBDM, which is developed in accordance with the International Docking System Standard, and uh, which is agreed by all major space agencies for future use. And so this could place Europe at the center of LEO infrastructure with a, a clear will to partner with everyone at international national level, giving a high potential for future evolutions, visit to Russian, US, Chinese, Indian or private stations, even dreaming of a small European autonomous station, if you remember the MTFF, uh, or even a commercial offer for space tourism. There is a very high demand currently, so Europe would cooperate with everyone. Concerning the programmatic elements, the associated costs are currently under evaluation and there are large dispersions, of course, as there are no detailed concepts yet. But we have numerous detailed evaluations coming from the past with uh, RN5 and RN5ME. Uh, typically, we have to see about the adaptation of RN6 system, which was evaluated on the basis of RN5ME. On the ELA4 side, it's quite low, as the required adaptation are not very important. The capsule system itself is relatively low also, thanks to all the previous developments on ATV and ESM. Dedicated infrastructures in Kourou, training center, recovery mean may have to be added, but it strongly depends on the needs and we don't want any duplication, so it can be minimized thanks to the existing means such as the European Astronaut Center in Cologne. Just as a synthesis, let's say that the grand total would represent less than two euro per year per European citizens in the concerned countries. In terms of planning, if a decision was taken at the 2022 Ministerial Conference to start a detailed two-year study, and if the final decision was taken in 2024, as we consider that the general development duration would be eight to ten years, we believe that the first capsule flight cargo version could take place in 2028, with the first human spaceflight from Guyana Space Center in 2030. As a conclusion, well, it's very easy to kill, uh, useless, the money could be spent in a more useful way, even in space, anyhow we don't have the money and so on and so on. However, this could be a very strong positive sign of optimism for the future. It can clarify the question of independence for, for Europe. It would be a first step towards European autonomous exploration, a key contribution to cooperative actions. And it can even be a, a strong socio-economical interest for French Guiana. But mostly it can be seen as a strong, large, innovative, federative program. It would be purely European, not just part of a cooperative larger program. Excellent for STEM, excellent for the vision, excellent for next generations. Dream is alive for our, our youngsters, uh, objective for studies for next generations and not only engineers. And so we really believe that this, uh, it is strategic for Europe to occupy low Earth orbit as a major power in the current multipolar world. And as the conclusion, I'd like to quote a sentence by astronaut uh, Dr. Claudie Ignoret, you don't get anywhere with your dreams unless you start first step. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you.